This is the Noctua NH-U12A and we reviewed it in a dedicated video. We've linked it down below if you're interested. In this video though, we're gonna do something a bit weird. I'm kind of curious what's gonna happen and this will depend on the kind of air cooler you use. But what happens when you place fans in reverse directions on an NH-U12A? If you're wondering what I mean by that, stick around. By this point, you've probably seen our original ad for Thermo Grizzly's Carbonaut Pads. They're clean, peace of mind replacements for traditional thermal paste, and best of all, you'll never have to replace them. But did you also know that you can buy Carbonaut Pads in different sizes for various processors? 32 by 32 millimeter for Intel desktop CPUs, 38 by 38 for Intel HDT and Ryzen, 25 by 25 for the RTX 2080 GPU, and so on. They even make a giant 51 by 68 millimeter pad for Threadripper. I highly recommend Carbonaut Pads, and you can learn more by clicking the link below. So this is the tower of the NHU-12A, and it is a beefcake for sure. Despite its rather compact size, it's got seven nickel-plated copper heat pipes. You count counting those there? That's seven nickel-plated copper heat pipes in a tower that's not much larger than a Hyper 212. One of the reasons why this cooler performs so well, given its size. And normally, you'd see the fans look like this. One intake fan, so to speak, one that's pushing air through the tower, and one exhaust fan, or the pull fan, the fan that's pulling air from the tower to exhaust out typically the rear of your case. In this video, we're gonna do something super strange and flip the intake fan around to where both fans are pulling air away from the tower. Does that, does that make a little more sense now? Now at first glance, we might need to try more than just the NHU-12A for this experiment because this particular cooler has sealed off fins along the sides, meaning there won't be places for air to be pulled into the tower to then be exhausted out both the front and the rear. Noctua designed this cooler to be kind of a wind tunnel of sorts, so there's no places for air to uh, be pulled in or pushed out through the sides. That's effective when you have a push-pull setup. So I think what we're gonna have to do is try this with more than one air cooler, preferably a second one that doesn't have sealed sides. That way air can be pulled in to then be exhausted, assuming that is in fact how uh, the airflow pattern will look at the end of the day with this unorthodox fan array. Who knows? That's why this video exists. We're gonna find out. All right, so we're using a thermal pad just to keep things consistent between uh, air cooler test, And then we will also be, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I was that's all I was really supposed to say there. I don't know. You can stop filming now. Go on, get her down. Make sure that thermal pad stays in place when we do this. Yeah. Put it on backwards. Hey, now we obviously need a baseline. So we'll run this cooler as it was meant to be run first, just to see how things fare. The CPU we're using is a, t uh, not 10900K, it's a 9900KS. So a uh, pretty spicy one. Actually, I think this U12A is gonna struggle despite how good it is uh, for its size. Uh, but that will be kind of our, 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 yeah, just our control. And then after that, we'll flip this front fan around and then see how she fares. By the way, the case we're using is a Fractal Design Meshify C. It's a beautiful mesh front panel there. And uh, I think airflow is gonna matter a lot in these tests. So it's important that we have a front panel that's at least somewhat forgiving from an airflow perspective. Mesh C is one of the best ones out there. Drop her in gently. The Z390 Designair, in case you're wondering. Beautiful board. So we've got the system set up here and I've locked all of the fans to a normal curve. So we expect them to behave identically between tests. I've also made sure that the CPU was locked to five gigahertz all core uh, at 1.345 V core, I wanna say. Uh, nonetheless, that also will not be changing from test to test. We wanna make sure all this stuff is standardized. Uh, and we've got ID64 engineer here. All we're gonna do is click start. You can see we're stressing the uh, the memory, the cache, the FPU, and the CPU. We could, we could disable memory, to be frank. We just wanna stress the CPU here. Uh, but if we wanted a full system load, now we could enable everything. I think that for this test, just stressing the CPU is good enough. So we're gonna click start, and we're gonna let this run for about 20 to 30 minutes. And so we just finished with the first set of tests using the Noctua NHU-12A, uh, which is a really good cooler, but in, the flipped fan scenario didn't do too well. We'll show you that stuff at the end of the video because we also want to test another cooler that I think will perform significantly better and there should be a pretty obvious reason why, uh, the Shadow Rock 3. Now, not only is this a slightly larger cooler, uh, but it has openings on the sides. So I think air will be able to make its way into the tower 
through the tops and bottoms when it's oriented like so. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I think the push push config or the pull pull config really is what we're doing will work better here. Uh, granted, I think this cooler is actually a worse performer than the NHU-12A. It should still do better, theoretically. I mean, we're just messing around in this video, but I think that this, according to what we just saw, which was not good, this will do better. So now we've got the Shadow Rock 3 cooler installed. We've used the Noctua fans. The reason why is because we wanted to keep the, uh, the fan RPMs as consistent as possible, and every fan has a different uh, RPM range, so to speak. So uh, we wanted to make sure this was standardized. We also flipped the front fan back to the original position. So this will be our control test here, and then we'll swap this fan around. And then for the third test, we'll also have the uh, front case fan turned around to kind of aid uh, that transfer there out the front as well. So let's see how this goes. So let's talk about what we just saw. The Noctua NH U12A, which I expected to be the better cooler all around in these tests, actually performed worse, not only uh, with the reverse fan config, which to be fair, I, I did think it would do poorly on just based on how it was designed, uh, but also uh, in the normal push-pull config. Actually, the, the, the Shadow Rock 3 did better with the Noctua fans than the Noctua tower itself did with the Noctua fans, which I think is interesting because the NHU 12A is uh, a more expensive cooler than the Shadow Rock 3, so maybe a testament to how good the Noctua fans are. So in a stock configuration, the hottest core for the 9900KS with the NHU 12A was 92 degrees Celsius. No thermal throttling, which is good. Remember, we're clocked uh, at 5 gigahertz at a 1.345 V core. Now in the reverse configuration, meaning both fans were set to pull air from the tower, the NHU 12A clocked in the hottest core at uh, was core four at 98 degrees Celsius with 4% thermal throttling, which means this CPU uh, did not like what it was experiencing. So in a desperate attempt to make this test any more plausible, the last thing we did was swap around the front intake fan, which I know you can't really see through the mesh, but it's set to intake by default, obviously. We flipped that around to where it was pulling air uh, out of the case into, into the atmosphere, uh, which I assumed would help this fan out a bit. That actually didn't do much of anything though. The CPU throttled by 5% this time and the hottest core, which was core three in that test, still pegged 98 degrees Celsius but here's why I think that happened. So picture the NHU-12A in place of the Shadow Rock 3. Remember, that cooler had a sealed bottom and top fin stack, meaning air could only get into the tower from the right or the left. Now, if you have two fans pulling air in one direction from the tower and two fans pulling air from another direction in the tower, you effectively have no movement of air within the tower because it's being tugged equally in both directions. That's a problem. Now, in the Shadow Rock 3's case, the dynamics change because air is allowed to enter the tower from the top and the bottom, which is why I specifically wanted to use this cooler here and not another one that had sealed fin stacks. This cooler performed significantly better than the NHU-12A when the front fan was flipped around. So at the end of the day, you have two different air tower philosophies going on here. The wind tunnel design of sorts with the tops and bottoms of the fin stacks completely sealed, which certainly helps this cooler and many respects. And you have the kind of open fin stack cooler design that the Shadow Rock 3 boasts. And depending on how you have airflow kind of set up in your case, this could be better or worse for your CPU temperatures. Now at the end of the day, two or three degrees Celsius, it's not a huge deal. Maybe when seen in the context of a 9900KS at five gigahertz all core, for air coolers like these it can be a bit difficult and three degrees Celsius might mean uh, a good deal to you. But uh, the point of this video was not to knock on the NHU-12A. I don't want that to be what you take away from this. This cooler is excellent for what it is, especially given its size. I think it's one of the biggest selling points of an NHU-12A. Otherwise, just get an NHD-15, which is a behemoth, but also a really large and quiet air cooler. So this video was quite fun and I definitely learned a thing or two about how air behaves when you have multiple fans set up in a system a certain way. At the end of the day, it's important that you displace enough air from the tower to keep CPU temps in check. That's all that matters. Some coolers would run perfectly fine with fans basically pulling air from both sides of the tower. That's definitely unconventional and you'd have to completely change how you map airflow in your case. And every case is gonna be slightly different, so mind that as well. But yeah, I think, I think that was fun. Maybe, maybe not. What am I supposed to do? We had to film this outro twice because somebody forgot to click the record button. Did you learn something today, Nate? Yes. What'd you learn? 
but both the fans facing outward. Facing away from each other. No, wait, don't do that. No, that's that's bad, that's bad. Don't do that, right? Correct. Are you just saying correct to whatever I ask you? No. If you guys like the video, click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for satisfying your morbid curiosities with me.